If you've been following this course from the beginning, you'll remember our very first graph problem, a problem that was solved by Leonard Euler in 1735. He answered the question, can I go for a stroll around the city of Königsberg on a route that crosses each of the seven bridges exactly once? Let's take Euler into the 21st century to London. Here's a question. Suppose I want to take the tube from King's Cross to Embankment. Now, as we all know, the tube isn't always 100% reliable. There are sometimes signal failures. And if there's a signal failure, then it will prevent travel in both directions between a pair of stations. So here's a question for a modern day Euler. How many signal failures would it take to prevent travel from King's Cross to Embankment. You may be looking at this and thinking, where do I even start? Do I have to do an exhaustive search across all possible sets of signal failures? What we'll be discussing in this video is a way to think about problems like this that's much, much smarter. We'll see that sometimes, if we're cunning, we can translate a graph problem like this into a max flow problem and then we've got a fast, ready-made algorithm for solving it. I won't dive straight into this London tube problem. In this video, we're going to look at a simpler problem where the ideas behind this translation strategy are easier to see. We're going to look at matchings. Here's the problem we'll look at. Imagine we have sick patients who need kidney transplants and we have a limited number of kidneys available and there are transplant compatibility constraints, which mean that only certain kidneys can go to certain patients. The goal is to assign kidneys to patients. We could just assign them greedily like this, but then we could paint ourselves into a corner and end up in a silly situation where we've got one spare kidney and no one who can accept it. Better to match as many kidneys as possible. In this case, we can match all three kidneys to patients. So, that's the question we're going to be looking at. Given a compatibility graph like this, what is the maximum number of matchings that we can make? Here are some definitions. As usual, pause the video, read these definitions, copy them out on pen and paper, and then come back when you're ready. And now, Here's a strategy for solving this matching problem using the max flow algorithm from the last two videos. We'll start out with a bipartite graph and we'll create a flow network. In other words, we're going to create a helper graph in which all the edges have directions and capacities as we can see here. And we've added two new vertices, one for a source and one for a sink. Next, we'll find a maximum flow on this helper graph. Let's call it F star. And then we're done. We just reinterpret our max flow F star as a matching. In other words, we ignore the source and the sink and only pay attention to the edges with flow. And then, hey presto, we have a matching. Okay, this is all so clean and simple that I should really be wearing a black turtleneck and sticking an Apple logo all over this. But there's something grievously wrong here. Pause the video and see if you can spot the bug in my thinking. Let's run through this proposed algorithm once more. And this time, I'm going to highlight what could go wrong. Okay, we start with a bipartite graph. We turn it into a flow network as before. And then we find a maximum flow. But what if our maximum flow algorithm returns fractional flows? That's a perfectly good solution to the flow problem, splitting some of the flow so half of it goes one way and half goes the other, but it's definitely not what we want here. We can't take this max flow F star and say, here you go, here's your maximum size matching. It just doesn't work. It's easy to deal with this. We just need to say run Ford Fulkerson rather than solve max flow. Ford Fulkerson is one particular algorithm for solving max flow, and we know about the integrality lemma. We know that Ford Fulkerson will, if we give it integer capacities, return a flow that's integer on all the edges. Okay, 
That's one gotcha. There's a second gotcha, more subtle than the first, that might have gotten you wondering also. Let's work through this proposed algorithm once more. As usual, we start with a bipartite graph. Next, we turn it into a flow network. But this time, I picked a different way to turn it into a flow network. I might think to myself, I know all the capacities better be integers, and the source has three edges and the sink has four edges, so let me have capacity three times four equals 12 going out from the source and into the sink, so the capacity at the source matches the capacity at the sink. I mean, it's spurious reasoning, but I might have thought that way, and it's no good. The flow that I'd like to get as my solution doesn't even work on this network, it doesn't fit in. The point of all of this is to say that we have to be cautious when we translate problems from one domain to another. The first bug in our thinking came because we didn't pay enough attention to how do I translate from a flow into a matching. And the second bug in our thinking came because we didn't choose exactly the right translation from a matching problem into a flow problem. These are slippery things, not because they're hard to fix, but because it's hard to even notice that there is something that needs to be fixed. So what I want to offer now in this video is a formal systematic way of thinking about translation problems. Whenever we use the translation strategy, there are two claims that we have to justify. I'm going to write them out here for the particular case of maximum size matching solved using max flow, but the structure of this argument is universal. We have our two problem domains, the matching domain and the flow domain, and we have to be able to justify two separate claims. The first claim is that we can find an optimal solution to the max flow problem which can be translated into a matching. Let's call it M star. The second claim is that if there were some hypothetical larger size matching, call it M prime, then it would translate into a flow F prime with larger flow value. And then the proof just finishes itself happily. There cannot possibly be such a flow F prime because F star is a maximum flow. Therefore, there is no such M prime. Therefore, M star is a maximum matching. This is the structure of the argument that we'll be using whenever we're solving a problem using the translation strategy. What's crucial to remember is that we have to do the translation in both directions. We need to think out how, about how to translate a matching problem into a flow problem, and we need to think about how to translate a flow into a matching. I'm not just talking about what you need to think about when you're trying to prove the algorithm is correct. I'm talking about getting the algorithm right in the first place. If we can't justify the claims about the translation in both directions, then chances are there's a corner case somewhere that will screw up our output. Okay, so once we've set out the task, it's pretty easy to flesh out the argument, at least for this problem. For the first claim, let's just clarify what it is that we have to prove. We have to prove that we can translate F star into a matching, in other words, into something that satisfies the definition of matching from the beginning of this video. In other words, we have to prove that each left-hand vertex ends up connected to at most one edge, and each right-hand vertex is connected to most one edge. We've already said how to justify it. We said, make sure we run Ford Fulkerson so that by the integrality lemma, the flows on each edge are integer. And now, because the flows are integer, and because the capacity is one on each edge, that means that each flow on each edge is either zero or one. And if we look at an arbitrary left-hand vertex, it has a total flow in of either zero or one, so it has a total flow out, which is either zero or one, which means that only one of its outgoing edges is active, and likewise for the right-hand vertices. So if we just pick out the edges where F star is equal to one, we do indeed get something which satisfies the definition of matching. The next claim is also easy to prove. I'm just going to leave it here. I won't read through it all because it's all actually pretty self-evident. Pause the video and read this through to yourself.
OK, back to the problem from the beginning of this video. How many signal failures would it take to prevent travel from King's Cross to Embankment? I'm not going to tell you the answer, but I am going to say that you can answer it using the translation strategy and by running MaxFlow on an appropriate helper graph. This problem is actually a little bit different to matchings though, because here our goal is to find a translation between cuts and signal failures. You need to devise a flow network in which a minimum cut corresponds to the signal failures that you're trying to find. And then, of course, the ford fulkerson algorithm gives you an easy algorithm for actually finding the minimum cut. So, happy hunting.